Hi and welcome. In this video, I want to go through what I consider the essential WordPress setup checklist, uh, which is basically 12 quick fixes and changes you need to make to your blog once you've got it set up initially. Okay, so first of all, let's pull up the blog that I'm gonna use for this. It's a test blog and it's brand new, um, so I've not tweaked it in any way whatsoever so far, just installed WordPress on it uh, using some software called Soft Delicious. So it's an ideal way to demonstrate the kind of changes, the 12 fixes and changes that you should make to any brand new WordPress installation before you start blogging. Okay, the first change we're gonna make is we're gonna go across to users and look at all users. At the moment, it should only be the admin user. And what we wanna do is get rid of the default user called admin. And basically, this is a problem for security, for hackers who are trying to brute force their way into your WordPress blog by guessing your password and username Obviously, if they're targeting the username admin because you've left it as a default, it makes life easier. If you've changed the default admin user to a different name, then they have to actually try and guess that as well, which makes it a lot more difficult for them. Okay, so all we need to do is add a new user with a different name and a new password. So I'm gonna pause the video while I quickly fill in the details here. Okay, so I've just gone with my own name as the username and my email address, first name, last name, my website. Um, I've left the button ticked for send the new user an email about their account. Basically, this will email me the uh, logon username and a copy of the password so that I've got that uh, rather than having to take a note of it. If you want to take a note of it at this stage, you can just click on show password and it will actually show you what the password is so you can copy and paste that and make a note of it. I prefer to get that email sent to me so I can keep that uh, and I've got a record of it. Now the important bit here is that we change this to administrator, okay? So we're gonna have a new administrator for the site and I'm gonna click on add new user. And then once we've added the new user, what we need to do is actually log out and then log back in as the new administrator ID. Okay, so I'm gonna pause the video again while I go and fetch that email with my new uh, password for my new administrator username. Okay, so I grabbed my new password for my new admin uh, from the email. I'm gonna click on log in and log back in. And now I go back to users, look at all users. And what I'm gonna do now is because I'm now logged in as Matt Garrett, make sure you are logged in as the new admin and that you do have the role as administrator. Uh, and what I'm actually gonna do is delete that particular user from the system. Um, any posts, etc., I can attribute to a different user. Confirm deletion, and that's got rid of that user. As I said, a quick and easy change uh, to the default settings for WordPress, and it makes a great big difference to hackers who are trying to use brute force attacks to get into your site. Okay, the next change is to get rid of the default uh, sample page, sample comment, uh, and sample post. So let's start with the comments. You'll find there's a comment in here that's just a, a sample comment. All you need to do is hover over down here, click on trash, and that sends it off to the trash bin. You can always empty that later on. Let's go to pages and all pages. And again, sample page. All I'm going to do is throw that into the trash and posts. Let's go to all posts. And here's the hello world default post that you get. Again, all I'm gonna do is click on trash and send that to the trash bin. Okay, the third change we're gonna make is the permalink structure. So we're gonna to go to settings and down to permalinks. And this is to make sure the URL for our posts and pages is a nice clean URL with the name of the post in it. So the one we actually want to use here is post name rather than this sort of messy stuff here where we've got the date and the year and stuff in. So let's just click on the button here for post name and scroll down and click on save changes and that's number three done. Okay, change number four, we're gonna go across to our plugins and look at the installed plugins. You should have a Kismet already installed on your site. It won't be activated. So what you wanna do is click on activate that and just go through and get it set up. You'll need to sign up for an Akismet plan. So click on the link here and get one set up. It is free, uh, basically just needs your email information. But that is going to cut down on the amount of blog comment spam that you end up with on your site, which is very, very useful. Okay, while we're here on the plugins page, we're gonna skip ahead to step number six, which is remove your unused 
themes and plugins. Okay, you can see why I'm skipping to that stage because we've got a plugin here that we're not using. So let's click on delete. Basically, any plugins that you've got installed on your blog that you're not using can be a security threat, they can cause conflicts with other plugins, and obviously they can potentially slow down your site as well. So if you're not using them, delete them. Keep your system, keep your blog clean and tidy. It's just good management. Okay, let's go back to step number five, which is to upload your WordPress theme. WordPress does come with a few default template themes built in, specifically 2014, 2015, and 2016. And if you click on Add New, it will bring up the WordPress directory where you can pick free themes from their directory. And some of these are reasonable, but you never know what kind of uh, extra code some of these themes are going to be hiding, links to other people's sites, and potentially malicious code that you don't want in there. So I'd always highly recommend spending the money investing in a decent premium theme for your blog to make sure it looks professional. So on that basis, what I'm going to do is click on Upload Theme, click on Choose File, and I've got a few here. Let's say I wanted to go with Genesis. Simply double click on that and then click on Install Now, and that will install my Genesis theme onto my WordPress blog, and I can then, once it's actually uh, ready to run, I can activate it. I'm not going to activate it on this one uh, because then I'll get into having to make some changes for it, but it is there, uh, and I can then preview that. Sorry, where has it gone? There it is. I can preview that on a live preview or activate it. Now, going back to step number six, delete your unused plugins and themes. That's where we want to get rid of these old themes that we're not using. If I click on this, you'll notice there's a button down here in the bottom right-hand corner where I can delete this unused themes, unused theme. Okay, and I'll do it again for 2015 and click on delete, and there we go. Again, it's just good website management to keep your site clean. I won't delete this one because this is still active. Once you've activated your new theme, get rid of any themes and plugins that you're not using. Okay, step number seven, we're gonna to go to settings general. What we wanna do is get rid of the default tagline. Uh, I have actually apparently already done this on installation. Okay, usually you will find that this says just another WordPress site, which you don't want. It tags your site as a brand new site, uh, makes it easier for hackers to find, and doesn't particularly look professional. So you want to replace this tagline with a description or tagline that is about your particular blog and site. And then once you've scrolled down, click on Save Changes to update that so that it, it now reflects the tagline for your actual site. Okay, step number eight is to make comments moderated. So what we're gonna do is go under Settings to Discussion. This is basically to stop any comments that are posted on your posts. Uh, that get through a kismet because they're not spam to stop them being published automatically. Basically, you want the chance to review them before you actually publish them. Okay, so what you want to do is tick the box here for comment must be manually approved. Now, I also go one step further and say hold a comment in the queue if it has more than one link in it as well, just to make sure again, basically to make sure that people aren't posting stuff as comments on your, on your blog posts that you don't want going public without you having the chance to look at them. Now while we're here, I can also change the avatar to the Gravatar logo. Uh, you tend to get more use out of that rather than a mystery person, uh, and it can be quite a nice little change for the look and feel of the comments on your site. Okay, step number nine, update your profile info. Part of that is uh, do make sure that you've gone to gravatar.com and set up your profile and got an avatar image and things like that. And then let's go to your profile. Basically, just make sure that you've put in the information here, your website, uh, a bit about yourself, a biography, something like that. And this profile picture has been picked up from my Gravatar profile, okay? Hence the point of having a Gravatar profile. You can click on the link here and set one up for yourself. This basically gives a bit more information to users who visit your site about you, gives you a bit of personality, makes it easier for them to connect with you, and should encourage them to like, know, and trust you and your site. So it's just giving them a bit more to connect with you about. Okay, change number 10, we're gonna go back to settings and general. This is check your time setting. 
uh, and make sure it's your local time setting. So we simply come down to where it says time zone and there are all sorts of different ways you can choose. I'm just gonna go with London, which is my local time zone. That may not seem important, but it can be, uh, again, it connects with people that they can see the real time that you're posting things and it's your local time. If you're UK based and your posts are in odd times because you're running your site on US time, then it looks slightly odd. But more importantly, there are certain plugins that use the time on your server and the time on your site to sync things up. And if it's the wrong time, it can stop one of those plugins working, okay? And you'll probably never work out why it's not working. So just making sure that your time zone is set correctly is a good first step. You can also make sure your local time on your PC is synced to the world time server. To do so, all you need to do is go to worldtimeserver.com and click on the link for the atomic clock, download the software and run it and it will sync your computer to the world time according to the atomic clock. Okay, almost there. Task number 11. What we're going to do is we're going to go back to writing under settings and we're going to update our ping list. Now ping list appears down the bottom of the page here. Uh, update services. There will be one in there as a default. What I'm going to do is paste in another six in total. Now some people do get carried away with this and have literally hundreds of sites. Basically your ping list are index sites that are going to be updated or informed whenever you post a new blog post or page or something like that to the site or even make an update um, so that they can then disseminate, informa disseminate that information to the search engines such as Bing, Google, Yahoo, etc. In fact, the list that I've got here includes Bing, Yahoo, Google, etc. Okay, to make sure that those main search engines are updated automatically when you add some new content or make an update. As I said, some people get carried away and have too many in there. Uh, I've got the six that I've just pasted in there as a minimum that you should have. We do have a longer list for you, which is available in the PDF version of this checklist, which there should be a link for under this video. Uh, if not, go to trywp.com and you can get it from there. Um, so you can then grab a longer list of about 40 or 50. Again, it's not a massive list. It's to keep it reasonably light, but to get the updates out there as is important. And obviously, remember to hit save changes to update the new settings. Okay, the last change uh, or update to your WordPress blog that you need to make, number 12, is to add some legal documents. Now, I'm not actually going to demonstrate this, uh, but you do need to get some legal docs on your site as quickly as you can. Uh, as a default, you should have a privacy policy and terms and conditions or terms of service, something along those lines, just to protect yourself in case you do have a disgruntled customer or visitor that wants to come after you for some reason and to make sure that you're in line with your local government's rules when I say local America Europe UK whatever it may be there are different rules for the FDA for instance or the FTC I think it may be um, so you need to comply to those rules also if you want to do paid adverts you need a privacy policy for uh, Facebook with paid ads for them. So you want to make sure you've got at least the basics there. You can get some free templates from a site called termsfeed.com. Um, and again, the link for that will be in the PDF version of this tips uh, guide, which again, the link should be below. Uh, I've also done a post about this on WP Toolkit, which you can find at WP Toolkit Essential website legal document templates with hyphens um, and that goes through a couple of different options because while there is a free option on terms feed there's also a paid option on there uh, they have limited documents that you can get you may need specific types of documents and there are other places that you can get those from uh, you may have to pay a little bit depending on which documents but it just makes sure that you're covered for whatever you need whether it's an anti-spam policy copyright notice disclaimers FTC compliance DMCA compliance all of those sort of documents just make sure you've got them in, in place just in case you need them Okay, so that's our 12 essential WordPress checklist of quick fixes and changes to uh, make to a new blog. In the PDF version, there is a checklist that you can print out, just a one page uh, to keep handy for whenever you're installing new blogs, just in case you need it. But they are all pretty quick and easy, and once you've done it a few times, you'll get very used to it. The hardest thing to remember is the, the ping list, uh, so it's worth having text file with those available in it. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Please feel free to leave any comments and feedback below. We are gonna be making a follow-up to this video of advanced WordPress tweaks 
for SEO and speed and things like that. Uh, so check the download page if you've got it uh, or down below to check and watch the next video for advanced WordPress setup tweaks. Thanks very much.